This is the Anker 737 power bank. It's an 86.4 watt hour battery. And this is really just how all power banks should be. It, I think Anker have done a good thing here. They've added a bit more information. People like to see that on the screen. And this power bank gives you really good flexibility because not only can you use this across all power delivery voltages from like five right up to 20 volts, uh, it's got high power output, so up to 140 watts output. And you can, so it means you can use this on like laptops that now support power delivery and it still has standard USB-A. So it really covers a large range of devices. Not only that, but the input on this is up to 140 watts as well, which means that when it's low on power, you can dump a ton of energy into this thing really, really quickly. It's incredibly handy. That is, for me, the best thing about this. Anyway, let's just have a quick look at where I'm up to on this because people have uh, commented on a video where I was looking at charge cycles and stuff. So I'm just going to see where I'm at. I bought this over a year ago and right now you can see that I've used 77 complete cycles. I've only put just 6.7 kilowatt hours into this and uh, battery health is currently 100%. So we're all good on this at the moment. This it has got loads and loads of life left in it. So I'm not actually here to talk about this really today. I'm here to talk about this one. This is a 20,000 milliamp hour uh, battery. They seem to be stating everything in milliamp hours, which seems odd given the fact that power delivery is multi-voltage and it really would make more sense for them to state it in watt hours. But um, let's just have a look at the spec on the side. So it's all it's all stated here on the side in, uh, in milliamp hours. Very strange. Anyway, this one has a maximum output of 200 watts. So you can only charge it up to 100 watts, so slightly less than the 737 on, on the charging side. But if you want to, you can use the two USB-C ports at the top to do power delivery and have these can be 100 watts each out of this thing. Out of this tiny little thing, this can deliver 200 watts. Now, I don't think I've got the stuff to be able to force it to do that, but I'm going to try and get it to deliver some sort of power. I'll do that in a minute. Anyway, just moving back to this one for a second, there are a couple of things that this does not do well and does not do right. So I'm curious to know whether this one solves those problems. Firstly, it doesn't seem to support power delivery at 12 volts. So if I just bring this cable in like this, the reason I say that is because I use cables that trigger 12 volts on here to give me power from this power bank to a 5521 or similar connector. Really, really handy for lights and for monitors and for recorders and all sorts of things that take these type of connectors. But this doesn't allow 12 volts. So many devices are 12 volts, but if I plug this into here, you'll see that it only triggers it up to nine volts. That's not really any good, is it? It just can't seem to do 12 volts. I'll just show you on this other battery here, the fact that this would normally work at 12. So if I plug this into this, um, this battery here, Oh, ah, another anchor one. That's doing that's doing nine as well. Oh, well, that's not good. Maybe I should um, bin off the anchor stuff. Hang on. In you come. Okay, a bit overkill. This is the the EcoFlow, and I think this has got some power in it. Not much, but it's got enough to do to demonstrate this. Right. You see that there? A little bit awkward for me to turn this around. I could, I think I can rotate the display, can't I? Oops. Oh, <laughs> I can only do it that way or that way. Fine. Anyway, you get the point, right? 12.08 volts. Bluetti battery. Did I say EcoFlow a second ago? I think I did. That does absolutely fine. Oh, at providing power delivery at 12 volts. This, not so much. Well, as that other anchor battery didn't either, I'm a bit concerned that this isn't going to be any better, really. Uh, but the other, and the other thing that it doesn't do very well is charging this and other certain other devices. Now, this is an absolute essential, essential one for me to be able to use this with. 
This is uh, drone batteries, and of course, drones eat through batteries. So having a portable power bank available to be able to just top these up is really good, and particularly to be able to top them up at, on a fast charge. Anyway, let's have a look at this one. They are a good size, these, aren't they? Not too heavy. Uh, lithium ion batteries. I know there'll be people out there saying they should be lithium ion phosphate, but not really that practical necessarily for um, a power bank. But that's a different, that's for a different video, I think. Look at that. Tidy that, isn't it? So, as per the others, we've got the standard three ports on the top. One is an input or an output, the other one's input and output, and you've got USB A as well. But this one, look, it has. The whole thing has got that gloss like the screen on this one. I think I'll, uh, I think I'd take, um, I think I'll take this actually with a bit of matte on it rather than just having nothing but gloss to get all uh, scratched up. And then it, look, it's also got something on the um, on the bottom here too, some sort of like like as if you can put it on a cradle of some kind. I'm not familiar familiar with this. I don't know what cradle these go on. I've never seen anything like that. But uh, clearly, it's got little things to to, t um, to marry up with pogo pins to uh, sit presumably on a cradle like that and charge up. So let's see if there's any power in it, because if not, I'm going to have to put some in. You should really store and ship lithium ion batteries with either 30% or 50%. And there should there is there are certain temperatures as well, but um, let's not be fussy about it. But certainly batteries should be shipped and, and stored at uh, around about 30 to 50% to um, ensure they last a long time. Let's just plug in. 100, 100 watt charger into this. Okay, there we go, 50%. Not sure why that didn't power up. So these displays that they have on them, they're not, it's not very bright, particularly in here with my lights, but I'm hoping you can see that all right. And we've got 73 73.9 watts going into this right now. That should be, really on this charger, that should be about 92, 93. Uh, so I'm not sure why that isn't the full amount. Oh no, sorry. It's not 50% at all, is it? It's right down at the bottom. What, what was I talking about before, 50%? I'm sure that came up with 50%. I'm going to have to look back at the footage and uh, and, and put some voiceover on this because I'm sure that came up with 50% when it, when it first powered up. Anyway, no, look, it's right down at the bottom at 1.7%. So this has been shipped with no power in the cells at all or alternatively, it has a constant drain, the BMS presumably in this, uh, the battery management system or some aspect of it has a continuous drain that means the batteries will go down. I imagine the BMS will then stop it from draining the cells down to nothing, but I just don't think you should really be sort of storing these with like nothing in them right down at their kind of minimal voltage or minimum voltage. Anyway, I'll be back in a second. I'll uh, get some charge into this. I'll leave this for a few minutes, get some charge into this. But unfortunately, uh, right now, we're only getting 73.9 watts into this for some reason. It should be more than that. Now we're cooking. Uh, if you can hear any noise in the background, by the way, that's my uh, my batteries just supplying power here and they're doing a bit of work. So we're now up to 100 watts. We are charging at 100 watts. This thing is sucking in the power now. And as I said at the start of the video, 39 minutes to get this fully up to 100%. Uh, so I didn't mention what else comes in the box. Well, you do get a cable. It's only a short one, but uh, it's a maximum 140 watts. So handy, that's going to do all the charging you can possibly do with this, because remember these is only 100 watts in, and each port is 100 watts out, maximum 200 watts. So 140 watt cable is going to do you just fine. I imagine that's exactly the same one they shipped with this, which is why it's 140 watts. Uh, temperature wise, let's just take a quick look at temperatures, just because we can. Uh, so temperatures are sort of rising a little bit now. We've got maximum temps there on the charger of 42 degrees while it's charging at 100 watts. Not anything to worry about, but it definitely feels warm and you can see where the heat is spreading there across the unit. 
So this one, the 737, has six 21700 cells in it. So I originally said I, th I thought there were 18650, just because it looks quite small. Uh, but they're not, actually. They're 21700 cells, 4,000 milliamp hours each. And there are six of them, two here and four down the back here. This, however, only has can only have four cells. It, I mean, it, it, it must only have four, four cells in. And I'm thinking they have to be... 21700s again. The only difference is they've increased the capacity of those cells. So they're pushing the limits really and they've got 5000 milliamp hour cells. So four, I'm going to guess it's four of those. I haven't managed to see or find a tear down and I'm not tearing this down because I paid for it and I don't want to destroy it. But I thought for a moment they might be, just let me take the one out of this torch here. I thought that they might be these I thought they might be the 26650s because these, you know, these are obviously 5,000 milliamp hour. But then I kind of just held it against the bottom here, and you can see it's it's they're just they're just too big. There's no way that's gonna. Oh, that's magnetic at the bottom. Oh, didn't realize that. Cool. Um, anyway, they're just too big. I don't think they're gonna fit in. So I assume they are just increased capacity 21700 cells instead. Don't know though and uh, someone may be able to uh, correct me on that in the comments or if someone's managed to find a uh, tear down post a link to it and i will uh, i'll kind of i think when someone posts a link in comments i've got sort of got to authorize it and uh, i'll do that and so so everyone can find that too but this is yeah this is starting to warm up now quite a lot i'm not surprised though because when you're dumping this much power oh, we've dropped now to 48.6 watts interesting why has that dropped so much so I'm going to have to leave this for a little bit longer because I want to do a little bit of testing on this and see whether I can get kind of over 100, at least over 100 watts out of it. I'm, I'm going to struggle to get 200 watts out of it with the stuff that I have here, but I'm going to um, try and get 200 watts out of it. Oh yeah, the, sorry, I forgot again. You get one of these, you get a pointless carry bag with it, a little kind of pouch to put it in. I just kind of think, don't worry about your stuff, don't baby your stuff so much. You can, this, this, these can just go in a bag, it's fine, don't worry. You don't need to put it in a horrible velvet bag like this, but they all seem to provide things like this. I personally don't like them, maybe you're different than me. But um, yeah, it's getting nice and warm that now. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know right now why this has already dropped down to 48 watts. We're only at 32%. I would have thought the charge rate at 30% would still be pretty high because already we're now up to one hour, one hour uh, and 10 minutes remaining. So I'm going to give this the best possible chance. I'm not going to use a third party cable here. I'm going to use the cable that came with it because that might make a difference. The fact that it's a, a shorter cable and this one is absolutely 100% rated for um, 140 watts. And I'm going to use this uh, this Apple charger. It's the it's the charger I've got with the best capacity. It's a 140 watt charger and we're going to just use it in the uh, AC outlet here. So let's pop this in and plug that into there. And let's see what that charge is at now. See what it negotiates, 4.2, 16.9, 29, 42. <clears throat> nope. Nope, we're still at 49 watts. Is, that a, is it a temperature thing? 43 degrees, I wouldn't have thought so. Uh, so, yeah, that's... Don't know, I don't know why that's doing that. This the, the 737 doesn't have that issue. It doesn't sort of ramp down to half charging capacity. Let me just plug it into the other port and just try that. I'll have to renegotiate all its stuff now. Oh, short circuit protection's been activated. Please stop using. What, really? <laughs> um, okay. Well, it's just come up with this warning. Short circuit protection's been activated. Please stop using. Fantastic. I did not short circuit that. I just plugged a cable into it. Was well, that dead now? Can I can I do nothing with this?
Uh, nope. It is dead. So I'm just going to turn the camera off for a second. I'm going to stop filming for a second. I'm just going to have a play around and see whether uh, whether this just needs to kind of time out for a minute or something. Oh, well. So this video has gone well, hasn't it? I can't get rid of this now. I, I don't know if it's uh, this is a faulty port, this one, because if I plug this into here, it's still working. And in fact, it actually works at 12 volts. So Anchor have solved that problem on their uh, older stuff. And this newer power bank, this new one, works at 12 volts, which is fantastic. But I don't know if it works at all. <laughs> in fact, let me just see whether I I'm getting any power out of this. Uh, however, if I, if, however, if I plug it into this one, I get nothing. So I don't know if I've just got a faulty unit. What about the USB A? Is that still working? Yep. USB A is still working okay. So there we are. I can't get this to do anything. I've tried holding it down, I've held, tried double tapping, triple tapping, all sort, all kind of combinations of things. The screen did go off momentarily, but it came straight back on with this. I don't think I did anything wrong. I will re-watch the video when, in the edit and check whether I did anything wrong, but I don't think so. The only thing I did was try this port for the first time, and as soon as I did that, it came up with this. So I'm glad that Anchor have got short circuit protection on their boards. But I'm not glad that I need it because a bit of quality control wouldn't go amiss. And um, I think this is going to have to get sent off to like my mate Vince or something like that. Well, I'm thinking to myself now, should I even bother editing and uh, publishing this video? But I am going to do that because I think it's important to see these kind of things. Now, this isn't representative necessarily of every single one of these devices. I doubt you'll get this problem on every single one. But it is important to see when these kind of failures happen. And um, yeah, I'm going to put this video out anyway. So yeah, the Anchor Prime 20,000 milliamp hour power bank. And this is uh, its not the 735 at all. Uh, I don't know where I got that from. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. And thanks very much for watching.